Now that we have four different numbers, we can choose uh, almost any of the equations. We just have to choose an equation that has time in it. So choose whichever equation you like. I feel like using this equation. Delta x equals v initial x plus v final x over 2 times the time. You don't have to use this equation. You could use any equation that has the time in it. All right, so the displacement is positive 5. The initial x is 0. The final x is positive 17. Again, I'm using parentheses to separate the sign of the number from the addition sign. And again, while this might seem a little uh, silly to you, I'm actually really encouraging you to use this exact notation. It's going to pay off big time as your physics course proceeds because you're going to be very conscious always of the signs and much less likely to make sign mistakes. And the time we don't know, so we're not plugging in a variable for that. The zero now is gone, so we have 17 divided by 2 times the time. 17 divided by 2 is 8.5. 8.5 times the time. Now we need to move this 8.5 away from the t. The 8.5 is multiplying the t. We use the do the opposite principle and divide. But the golden rule of algebra says that if we're going to divide the right-hand side by 8.5, we are morally obligated to divide the left-hand side by 8.5. Now the 8.5s cancel, and we get that the time is 5 divided by 8.5. Time to fish out your calculator and determine that the time is uh, approximately 0.59. So we get the time is 0.59. This is not a good answer. Now we have to put in the units, which are seconds. Should we indicate a sign? Well, no. Time never indicates a sign because it's always positive. Um, it's a good thing that time came out positive. What would happen if the time came out negative? We'd know we made a mistake. So the time is 0.59 seconds. Uh, and we already determined that the acceleration was positive 28.9 meters per second squared. Please redo this problem now if it gave you any difficulty before you move on in the videos. Let me remind you that you should not be satisfied with having gotten this question right. Our goal is not just to get the question right, but to get it right with a systematic approach and systematic notation. So I hope that your notation is looking as much like the notation that I'm using on the board as possible. Even if this particular problem wasn't very hard for you, using a systematic and consistent notation will pay off big time as you move on to harder and harder physics problems. Um, so if the problem is easy for you, you should say, gee, great, I should use this easy problem as a chance to build good habits, good habits of approach and notation. So when the problem isn't so easy, I'm still automatically going to be using the best possible notation and systematic approach.